Welcome to Online Tutorial 5. Today we're going to focus on the Interim Learning Report. To start with, it's very important to understand that there are two very distinct sections in the Interim Learning Report. First, there's your ability to apply theory to an idea of your choice and your ability to demonstrate and explain the nature of your idea using theory and your engagement with others. Secondly, your ability to reflect on the degree to which you recognize an entrepreneurial self in your everyday life requires you to use the STEPS model of reflection. And you can find the full tutorial on using that model in the online tutorial section of Blackboard. So let's start by thinking about section one. To begin with, I think we can do this visually. It might make it easier for you to understand what is and isn't being assessed. In weeks one to four, we did the pretest using a small amount of theory to ensure that you could understand which concepts were in play. Now, I want you to expand your understanding of those concepts using the materials available to you in QUT readings for the unit so that you can take that expanded understanding of those theoretical concepts and use them inside your group work, all right, to help you develop your thinking, to organize your thinking, and to validate your thinking. And I want that thinking process to shape your ideas development and to also come back and help you to further understand the nature of those theoretical concepts. You can take that advanced understanding and then apply it to section one of your interim learning report, which is the only piece of assessment in addition to the pretest that's in play at the moment. The idea that you develop will be presented in workshop two at the end of week eight in workshop two, as I said, but it won't be assessed. Either will your work and contribution within the group. The only thing that's been assessed is your thinking, which has been influenced by your engagement with the group. Okay, so very important to understand whether you turn up or don't turn up at your group, that's not being assessed. The nature of the idea that you develop is not being assessed. Your ability to make sense of that idea using the theoretical basis in section one of the interim learning report is being assessed. So how would I approach this? I would make sure that you take your understanding of the environmental interaction framework and you help apply it to your group's idea. You challenge each other to develop your idea through a process of proving you can satisfy that all elements of the framework can support your idea's development. What I mean by that is if you've got an idea that you've just sort of plucked out of nowhere, it just seems like a cool idea, but you haven't actually developed how it would create value. You haven't really developed how it would interact with the nature of its ecological or selective environments. That's going to mean that your CPS statement at the other end is going to be very shallow. Okay, It's not going to have that really neat focus that's been developed as a result of you exploring all of those different elements and how you can satisfy me that they actually all have a logical relationship to your idea. So I want you to use this process of group interaction to sharpen your own thinking and to increase your awareness of how your thinking may differ from others in the group. Don't assume that the group has to develop some form of consensus as to how the theory relates. You need to develop a consensus on what is your idea and how you'll present it, but that's not what you're going to bring back to me in your assignment. In assessment two, section one, you're going to be explaining this from your own perspective, and hopefully your perspective will have been shaped and influenced in a range of different ways by the nature of your group interaction. So I also want you to use the business model canvas, the sheets of which are on Blackboard, and you're required to, to articulate your entrepreneurial thinking, drawing on all those theoretical bases that compromise the environmental interaction framework. I want you, with direct reference to the new value creation idea, to explain how your individual collective resource profile has shaped your idea's development. Is this just an idea that relates directly to something that you're already good at, that you already know about? Or is it an idea that you've needed to use friendships and family members and other people that you can gain access to to go off and investigate the development of? Okay, to understand the nature of the environment, to understand the nature 
of how value can and can't be created. Second, with direct reference to the process of variation selection and retention, I want, and all forms of legitimacy, I want you to explain the importance of those factors on the development of your idea. How have ideas like this happened in the past and been rewarded by society or not? I want you to be able to demonstrate that you understand that. Third, and with direct reference to the three forms of value creation logic, value chains, value shop, value networks, I want you to explain what value you believe could be created and why you believe it could be captured. Fourth, in direct reference to your idea's ecological and selective environments, explain which factors most shape the development of your idea. For example, was it the abundance of resources that you could gain access to in your ecological environment, or was it the fact that you were trying to avoid particular aspects of a selective environment which may have been harmful to the development of your idea? And finally, I want you to be able to present your CPS statement for your customer, your problem, and your solution providing a close summary that provides a theoretical argument to support your proposed solution, ensuring that that aligns to the nature of your workings in your business model campus. For some of you, the CPS statement could be a COS statement. It could be more, well, we didn't really see a problem, we saw an opportunity, and that's fine. So just name it as that, all right? A COS statement, customer, opportunity, and solution. So, Important to note that the elements of the EI framework that are definitely being assessed by me are your resource profiles, cognitive socio-political legitimacy, variation selection retention, value chain, value shop, value networks, operational environment as it relates to the ecological and selective environments. So make sure that when you develop your thousand words that you have a tight focus on covering all of those, all right? And that you just don't move from one and leave it behind and move on to the next and then move on to the next. Be comfortable in blending them all in. They all relate to each other. They're all connected to each other, all right? So I wouldn't organize my work with set paragraphs for each of those things, right? It's only a thousand words. So it doesn't be, have to be overly dominated by headings and the like, but I'll leave that entirely up to you. And what I would say is, do feel free to use any other forms of theoretical concepts and theories that you believe might add value to your explanation. However, don't allow those additional elements to crowd out the space that you would need to adequately address these concepts. So in section two, now I'm looking for you to write in an entirely different way. I want you to use the steps model to address the primary question which I'm making available for you here to reflect upon. And that primary question is to what extent do you recognize an entrepreneurial self in your everyday life? So now with that idea or with that question, go find the steps model. You'll find it in the online tutorials and sit down and work your way through the process. For most people, the real risk here is that they'll leave that to the last minute. They'll think, yeah, I've got an hour up my sleeve that I can do that reflection. The reflection should be something you start now. Allow it to permeate through your thinking. Allow it a couple of weeks. Make notes. Think about the different questions that you're being asked, the supporting questions that you're being asked to work your way through. When you're on the bus, when you're walking down the street, when you're just by yourself, Think about those ideas. Allow yourself to really give yourself the best chance to get that vertical movement, to actually move down and really reflect deeply as opposed to just trying to address the questions in a way that sort of looks like a thousand words and therefore it should be okay, right? Remember, I'm assessing the process, the process. So if you haven't followed the process, then you're not going to get good grades. You have to follow the process, which means using why to ensure that each of your seven primary, so each of your supporting questions is one, focused still on the, on the nature of the primary question and has a linkage from the previous question, which shows me that you're getting that movement down the steps and in a vertical way to ensure the linkages occur. Watch the video, and if you're unsure, watch the video again. 
So a final checklist. You should be in a group where your opinions can be exchanged and developed re a specific idea. You should be using the group and others if you've got, uh, you're have got you a bit isolated to test your thinking, but not explicitly to seek a consensus. You are aware of the task instructions which are on Blackboard and you understand the specific focus areas of Section 1, as I noted uh, two slides ago. And you fully understand how to use the steps model of reflection. I'm going to run an online tutorial, I suspect, so keep an eye out for that so that we can uh, ensure that uh, anyone who's unsure can come along and have that uh, opportunity for interaction as well. All the best, and as always, if you have any questions, any doubts, just drop me a line.